this computer. Namaste everyone. Welcome to our weekly interfaith gathering. This month we have a special celebration that is Women's History Month. Today is the fifth program, our own program, and we partner with other organizations. The theme for this year is Women Providing Healing, Promoting Hope. The last few weeks we had wonderful religious and social uh, cultural leaders and they spoke, did prayers. We had wonderful discussion. That's the beauty of our group. And today, uh, I like to invite Mirtha Bardo, is one of our director from Argentina, the long time friend. Uh, she, she is very active in yoga sports, training a lot of yoga teachers, students, and we are working on something special to be part of the Olympic Olympic competition. That's yoga sports. In future, I hope within uh, five years we may be able to enter in the Olympic group. Here, I like to invite Swamini Mirtabado. Floor is for you. Do you listen to me? I am here, dear Guruji. Can you listen to me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Well, now I, I have to tell you, I, I am I am working so hard into institution, not profile institution, world yoga community in Argentina, South America. And one of the institution is going to to work on a sport activities. For all sorts of person, kids, adults, teenagers, special persons with some killers, sin Down syndrome, autism, Parkinson, Alzheimer. We help all sorts of people with the sport um, techniques, not only yoga, some techniques. And the other institution is federal institution. We are going to work with um, and other activities like yoga therapy, maybe Ayurveda, uh, and sport too, in, in, in all levels. Uh, I think that the woman can, can do, uh, can work hard um, for yoga. Uh, here in our country, in, in my country, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, most of the people who we were working in, into yoga are women. Not a lot of men. 80% are women, only 20% maybe they are men, uh, persons. But uh, it's uh, growing up, growing up yoga here very, very, very fast. Uh, now this year, next Saturday, I was talking to Gurusi, I'm going to have 200 students in our not profile course of sport yoga. People from all ages, maybe, we have people that more than 60 or 70 years old and, and arrive into our course and say, I, I, don't, I can't do anything because I can move. And after one or two or three moves, they can move and, and they can have a better life and they are happy. And we, we, we take places for family. Then the family came, the kids, mother, father, grandpa, grandpa, grandmother, Every, all the family together, uh, um, not profit classes too. And then, well, we are working so many, many hard. And I think that women, we, women, we have a, a force, a very strong force in our spirituality. Um, we can do that. We can, we can do a great job. Then this year, well, we are working so much with the new two social institution that depends from the world yoga community, depends on Guru Dilipshi, and here in Argentina depends on me. And we are starting working so hard with all that. 
I thank you, you, because uh, I, I was, I say to Guruji, uh, I don't, it is not a work for me because I enjoy it. I feel pleasure with, uh, I was, I, I see the people happy and, and telling us, oh, I, I can move and now I can, I can do a lot of more things. I can go to dance, I can practice yoga, I can practice asana meditation, breathing. They are very, very happy. Then I was very grateful with Guru Dilishi who put me in this way. Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome to one, uh, love to you and peace. Thank you, Mehta Bado. Uh, I, I want to introduce Mehta Bado to my friends. So I, I met her first time in 2005 when we had a global conference in Argentina. Uh, that, that's the time we had uh, interfaith gathering with the Mahatma and our current Pope Francis. He was a cardinal there. And we all worked together for interfaith in Argentina. And this is my, my one of my, uh, I'll say second home in on earth. <laughs> that is Argentina. A lot of friends are there. So thank you, Mr. Bado, uh, leading the value community in, in Argentina uh, and leading the yoga sports in South America. I appreciate it. So now I, I like to invite Reverend Kuda. Uh, recently I met, met her. Uh, I'll uh, request a prayer and a remark, Reverend Kuda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, everyone and greetings to you. Thank you so much, Guruji, for inviting me to speak today as we honor Women's History Month. I am Wida Joa Cooper Rodriguez, born Morris. I am the daughter of Olivia, the granddaughter of Maddie Lou, and the granddaughter of Nettie. We are a matrilineal clan of strong African-American and Native American women who triumphed against extreme hardships through generational poverty and welfare, working as servants and nannies for white families. My mother, Olivia, suffered unspeakable trauma as a child and teenager. From that trauma, she experienced severe mental illness and drug and alcohol abuse. We moved often and were homeless. The ancestors, chose me to break those cycles of poverty, abuse, and mental illness. My grandmother, Nettie, was Native American, probably of the Creek tribe in Georgia. In the Native American tradition, it is believed that what we do today impacts seven generations behind and seven generations ahead, healing those before and strengthening those to come. I am the one they called for healing. I honor their legacy. I honor my mother, Olivia, for all the gifts she gave me, even with all her challenges. She taught me to always have a plan A, plan B, plan C, and all the way to Z if necessary. That is how she survived, and that is how I thrive. Her pain gave me the tools and the strength and the insights to do the work I came to do. And that is to work with homeless women like her who live in despair. May I bring peace and comfort and hope. I have no regrets about my childhood, just gratitude. So today in this Women's History or Women's Herstory Month, I honor all women in all places who are fighting against the odds, who are making a way out of no way. The mothers who are teaching their children how to thrive. Women who are the peacemakers, the rule breakers, marching for our rights. Women who out of their pain fight for equity and change. I pray this day for all women who fight every day for their lives, their dreams, for we know what we do today 
affects seven generations before and seven generations to come. It is a powerful legacy we carry. Happy Women's History Month. And I say, Ashe, Aho. And so it is. I send prayers and blessings to each one of you. Namaste. Nam Namaste. It was a beautiful message, Reverend Kuda Rodriguez. And I, I know you have the spirit of the universe, you know. I, and that's Thank what you. I like about it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and uh, we are both connected through all faiths perfect. seminary. Yes, so, so thank you. We never know how we connect from different groups. Yes. I, I met over 5 million people in my life, even though I don't remember their name, but still I remember their face, wherever I go, yes. any country. You know. And yes. I, I th think we all came together for a purpose. I think we believe the universal love is more than anything else. That's why we are coming together. Thank you, Reverend. Now I like to invite my beloved brother, Rabbi Mark Clay. We worked together for uh, Gandhi King season uh, last some years. Uh, Rabbi is living in New Jersey, running a, a synagogue and very active in the community a long time. I, I met him through the Gandhi King season for nonviolence movement last day, uh, la, a few days before we had a beautiful celebration on 21st on Monday and we are going to have another event on April 4th. Rabbi Flores for you. Thank you. Um... Guruji, it's a, been a treat to know you for the several years that I've been working with Gandhi King and we get to, we were able to share company with each other uh, in person and now of course only online. I look forward to being able to come back into uh, our, our company with each other. Um, Someone's we okay. We celebrate women and um, one of the unique pieces I think of my Jewish tradition is the way in which we read scripture. Um, of course, the first people created Adam and Eve. Eve is the first one to pursue knowledge. And while some religious traditions want to argue that she tempted Adam, um, temptation requires knowledge. And there was none. There was something innate in Eve that there had to be more than getting up every day and eating and drinking and going back to sleep because we were born created in absolute ignorance. And so, um, you know, without her innate need for more, there would be no love, there would be no uh, celebrations. We wouldn't have a day like today because candidly, none of us would be here. Um, and so that's a take that most religious traditions don't um, think about when they think of Adam and Eve. Um, but I think it's, it's a sacred beginning. Um, I might add that in our tradition, uh, a girl becomes bat mitzvah at 12, a young boy at 13. Uh, that's the, the coming of age, uh, recognizing that women mature faster than men. And uh, so for all of the men watching, I am sorry to have to make that admission. Um, but we know that we celebrate this month because um, our lives are so, so deeply um, indebted to the women in our lives, to our, our, our matriarchs throughout time. Um, 19, uh, early, late 1930s, Regina Jonas was uh, first ordained as a rabbi in Germany. She died in the, in the Shoah, in the Holocaust. By the time the 60s came around, the American Protestant movement uh, realized that uh, ordaining women to the pulpit um, was uh, a monumental move in, in, in a reclama reclamation of spirituality in faith. 1972, um, my friend and colleague, Rabbi Sally Prezant, was the first woman ordained rabbi in America. This is her 50th year of uh, ordination. Um, my late first wife, Cindy, and my current wife, Lori, our daughters, you know, the women in our world have, um, have added so much depth and have held us accountable uh, for our behaviors. 
in fact, there's an understanding, even as to the Middle East, that we're women in control of the governments uh, of the Middle East and um, surrounding countries that we would probably find a way to peace. Um, the male bravado um, gets in the way of being able to see each other with dignity. So um, as we're hearing each other speak uh, from all of our respective traditions, um, it's most appropriate that we come together in prayer to be thankful for the women in our lives and for candidly the enlightened men who have come to realize uh, the debt that we owe. But we have to do more than we have done and it needs more than a month of celebration. Um, it's tragic that we have to carve out one month of the year to celebrate the women in our lives. Um, it should be a celebration that is uh, an everyday occurrence. Um, and um, if we are genuine in our prayers for healing and hope for this world, if we are genuine in our prayers, asking um, God to give us the strength and vision to do the work of respect and uh, dignity for each other, then we have to realize that uh, male, female, and the, the many iterations of how we experience uh, our gender's identities in this world um, all come from the same sense of human. Um, and um, we have to restore that dignity uh, to the point that when we look in each other's eyes, uh, we see God staring back. So in my prayer for peace and my prayer for healing, I ask God to give me the vision and the strength, courage, and influence to help others around me uh, give that dignity, uh, share that love and that sanctity of life with everyone with whom we come in contact. So for this season of nonviolence, for this month of women and for the relationships that we get to grow, may they see us move from strength to strength and may we find lots of opportunities to come into each other's company and share this message to the world. So my friends, my new friends, my colleagues, um, thank you for this opportunity, um, for the blessing. Thank you, Rabbi, you mentioned this not only for one month. Of course, we are with them every day. <laughs> but this month only for them. <laughs> That's a special. Uh, I remember we, we had the International Day Women's Day from the UN group that was on 9th. So somebody asked only one day. I said, no, 365 days. <laughs> so the uh, thing, thing is a lot of misunderstanding in different cultures. And sometimes we try to suppress women. That is not correct. But I, I remember when I grew up, my mother was very strong female leader in our community. My grandmother was there. My sister is a state attorney. And they all are educated and they behave very well. Because of them, I, I was, I, I'm able to interact with the females globally, very easy for me. So they train us how to respect women. The, the barriers that we've put in each other's way, we need to re erase and uh, again, restore humanity to uh to every one of us thank you rabbi for your wonderful message and i know we are a busy person still you are supporting us thank you appreciate now i like to invite my brother that is sheikh musa Damra. i will add him yes is our imam long time friend yeah, he he did a wonderful work for our new mayor in new york city he did a lot of service he's into the healthy lifestyle promoting natural healing food yeah so, so much work he is doing in new york uh, imam sheikh musa floor is for you Hey, um, good morning, Guru, and blessings to all of you. I say Assalamu Alaikum from the Boogie Down Bronx. We are grateful to be here. 
I don't know how you do it, Guru, but I think you have more than 24 hours in a day. But uh, nonetheless, we are blessed that, you know, you're able to utilize maximally the time that you have to always bring all of us, you know, for a noble purpose, noble cause, and to advance, you know, our common interests and eliminate the small human differences. So I am blessed to always participate for your occasions. So as earlier speakers stated, um, I think all of us can give, you know, testimonial to the fact that we're here uh, simply because of women. No woman, no existence, period. So I think that alone, you know, should conclude the meeting. No woman, no world, no life, no future, no today, nothing. With that being said, um, I just want to uh, also say uh, in my little corner, you know, in this huge city of New York, you know, particularly in the Bronx, what we, my wife and our colleagues have been doing in terms of changing not only the narratives, but the practice and the perception concerning different genders. My wife and I started the first and only full-time Muslim school in the Bronx 20 years ago, which is K to 12. And today we're proud to say that every high school graduate from our school went to college. And not only that, but um, about 15 years ago, when we were really introduced, you know, to the agonizing condition of our, you know, female, you know, partners, whether they're our mothers, our wives and daughters and sisters, uh, mostly immigrant women who were brought to this source and not having any connection to the larger community. A lot of them did not even speak the language and struggling with cultural changes and religious atmosphere and you name it. So we've decided to launch an innovative program and we call that program T Out Stress, T Out Stress, whereby, you know, after school, we would decorate um, a room and invite all these parents to come and meet with female teachers and, you know, uh, and, and then have tea, socialize and talk about, you know, uh, what they have in common and what, you know, what they need in their homes and in their lives. And that tea out stress program became so successful. Today, I'm reporting to you that we have been able to talk to our elected officials to, to open the very first Parkchester Lifestyle Center that will allow all female residents of this district to be able to socialize, get physical activities, learn the ropes of living in New York in the privacy of the center. The center is designed whereby if you prefer to be in a single gender section, you have that option. If you prefer to come mingle with others, you have that option. And when we say lifestyle, we mean every single aspect of one's lifestyle, economic and finance, education and training, I mean, you name it, every single thing will be there so that the women uh, who are mostly immigrants that unfortunately have been developing type 2 diabetes because of what they eat and how they live will, con will no longer be the victims you know, of such crime. And we are so extremely excited that in the Muslim community in the Bronx, we are able to participate in changing the narrative and changing the practice and changing the perception so that you know, women, particularly Muslim women and immigrant women will no longer be the victims of misogynistic culture that is unfortunately prevalent in you know, some part of the world. So that is our small contribution you know, in relation to this gathering 
in relation to the Women History Month and in our commitment in making sure that men and women will no longer be treated differently because of the you know, cultural practices or somebody using religious, selective religious codes to create this different leveling. So that is my contribution to this conversation. And again, I am extremely blessed to always answer your noble calls because when you call, it is for humanity. God bless you and God bless my fellow panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Imam Sheikh Musa. I, I'm so happy that this center is coming in New York. I'm proud because I asked a New Yorker, you know, does it matter? New York or India or any other countries is very important to uplift what mistake we did. You know, we had to change them. So whatever we can do, our people will support. Uh, continue your uh, great work in the society. I always watch your Facebook. But sometimes I don't uh, react, you know, because of the other events. But I, my eyes are there. <laughs> Thank you. Now I like to invite uh, one of our female leaders, that is Divya Prabha Madhaji from India. She is living in Varanasi. Varanasi is the constitution uh, for our Prime Minister Modi ji. And so many things happened last month in Varanasi. Here is Divya Prabha Madhaji. Prama, and thank you so much, Guruji, for inviting me to be in your program this evening celebrating William, women. Of course, as everybody said, women are first celebrating every day. And in our traditions here that we practice in Varanas, we have some very beautiful things that I wanted to share you, share with you about the divine feminine. Because we have these beautiful shlokas that go like this. Ya Devi Sava Bhuteshu Shakti Rupena Samstata Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sava Bhuteshu Matri Rupena Samstata Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sava Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Samstata Namastasye, 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 namo namaha. Ya Devi Sava Bhuteshu, Vidya Rupena Sansita. Namastasye, 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 namo namaha. These are the descriptions of the divine feminine that exist within all of us, whether our body may be male or female. And it's descri describing that Ya Devi Sava Bhuteshu in that divine in all beings, that divine feminine in all beings, that is that shakti, that capability, that ability to perform any action. I bow to that divine within you. Hmm. I bow to you, that divine within you, that is that mother power, matri rupena, the form of mother. I bow to you to that divine feminine, the form of knowledge, and that divine feminine, the form of peace. There's pages and pages of these different descriptions, but I just wanted to pick out these four because when we can remember these qualities of each of us as individuals, realizing that that is the feminine ability within us, the feminine divine within us, the ability to, the capability to perform no matter action which is in front of us in life, then we are able to be in tune with that real divine mother that is the divine mother of us all, no matter where we may be in the world, no matter uh, what path we may follow, because it's this reflection of just one. And we come from one, we go to one. We take one breath, no matter where we are sitting in the world. The breath I'm taking is no different from the breath that you're taking in uh, Argentina or in New York or in the Bronx, wherever you may be, we take one breath. We're one living, breathing entity, just with different individual qualities that come together to make a beautiful world when we perform each of our prescribed responsibilities and actions. So I thank you for 
bringing me here this evening, um, Guru Dilip Ji. What you're doing and what you're manifesting and what you're bringing together, I'm always very grateful for. And thank you for bringing me here to meet with your friends this evening and listen to their divine prayers. Pranam. Thank, thank you, dear Vivya Prabha Maharaji. Coming from Britain and living in India, and you are giving the message of Indian culture within five minutes about the woman. You see, 10,000 years back, they wrote everything in the scriptures very beautifully, you know. But the problem is when we go to the real life, we may not practice. That's the problem. You know, so not, uh, we don't want to uh, blame any religions or any religious teachings of the leaders. People are supposed to learn and implement in their own life. That's the part we are working on it how we can implement all the beautiful teachings in di different parts of the world through our interfaith activities. And as a uh, female leader on the month of uh, Women's History Month, I like to invite you to the World Yoga Community International Council, be part of it. That is a gift for everyone. We all work together and we'll work on the yoga month programs upcoming up. I'll connect with you for that. Thank you so much. Now, now I like to invite uh, my longtime friend that is Reverend Dr. TK Nagagaki. Uh, where is he? Okay, I saw him. At Spotlight. Yeah, TK does a lot of peace events interfaith events we, and recently we did a lot of events on Sostiga and is very active in our uh, New York community more than outside outside I know he does a lot of in our community take a uh, in okay. short prayer and uh, remarks for his for okay so yeah Linda yeah, well, uh, namaste and thank you very much, everyone who's joining us today. And then a happy Women's First Tree History Month. And uh, thank you, Guruji, for organizing this meaningful, meaningful events. I mean, I wonder how can you do all those various events? And uh, yeah, like a, you're like a Superman <laughs> in one way for me. But uh, I can only do certain things, you know, only a couple of them yeah maybe three things <laughs> at most so uh but uh, you have been doing a lot of lot of wonderful things too so i'm very amazed for what you do or what you can do or you know, maybe everybody need to learn from you how to do this you know <laughs> but um yeah let me start with the coming down of mine and also thinking of the you know happiness for the moment so i i won't say much actually today just ringing a bell but then that would be also very good and then, uh, as I said, I only do three things. <laughs> I just focus on the three things. And then, so maybe we can reflect, um, yeah, ourselves and um, through on this Women's Day, uh, or, I mean, Women's History Month, and how, what, what can we do? How can we uh, change? Uh, uh, so all those things you can think. So I would just ring three bells slowly. So breathe in and out. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Uh, just a little bit emergency. I don't know. Just one second. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Somebody is calling me like an emergency in the background. Just one second. Let, let him take it. Ah, he's back. Uh, no, 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 it's fine, fine. <laughs> uh, 
अनमिट यू सर ठीक है ठीक है अनमिट यू सर सॉरी सॉरी दैट जस्ट द द मीटर मैन केम जस्ट जस्ट द राइट टाइमिंग वाज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सो um but for today actually for myself i would like to share some of the uh you know the how important the woman female you know figure is uh in in japan history of japan i don't know maybe you probably heard some of the story from some of the people from japan maybe but then i just wanted to uh also mention it here uh especially for japanese you know japan is one of the country <laughs> never have a independent day <laughs> since simply because nobody so far you know the any of the people came and then you know what you call it uh, invaded so far and so uh over 1400 i mean at least the uh, japan officially japan the name as a uh, sun comes up which is started 1400 years ago and uh, at that time there's a constitution and also the system of uh, uh what do you call it um the calendar also and also the social system how you can gain the positions not just only birth but also the ability so those are actually introduced by the emperor uh suiko actually this she's uh, this emperor is a she the, so now of course you say in english you say empress you know but then there's no you know any other person so she's a king more like and then that during her time japan really established the original sense of the values everything actually and then uh there are actually two part person that i need to really say is a uh, although female is one thing she's, she's a queen and also there's a uh assistant you know regent of the you know the male too so for me male and female should be working together well then you can do many many things sometimes you know men dominate it and then women dominate maybe then might be not working well because i think like a male female sometimes pretty different <laughs> so both we need a both understanding so that's the my uh thinking that i was think uh wanted to share but before i go even i realize you know why they have to divide i mean in japanese the word is the same tenno i mean the the heavenly what do you call it uh, person or the ruler <laughs> more like so that's an emperor so so the the um, what do you call it uh, but then the japanese words is a one word so there's no distinction between female or male so you can't tell <laughs> that's a male or female but then when it comes to english i have to say you know the in, instead of a uh, suiko tenno we say empress suiko or instead of emperor suiko so that itself is also uh maybe may want to change it if you're talking about the uh, the agenda difference any positions and so forth shouldn't be you know it should just say one word or something like that uh and then even like a she you know english one is also problematic for me in language is you know you always have to refer to the pronoun as you know like he he and she and you know i mean like this gender always distinction so it could be some of the you know the word could be yeah they could be used as the uh, singular too maybe so you don't have to refer to the male or female or or all the you know gender orientation differences and so maybe that's another language because uh is uh, something that we may pay attention to uh, i just realized as i do a little uh, a little comfort uncomfortable saying that <laughs> the this is empress or emperor and but anyway he she's in the positions of the emperor and uh so and then the, in japan there are a couple uh, so called empress in uh, the uh, succession of the emperor in history uh, three at least and but then the one of them she's one of the longest one too 35 years she was in uh, um what do you call it? empress or empress uh, position and um so the uh, let me show you the picture in my background uh, let me switch to uh what do you call it i can just change the background so you can see both right the right. my uh, this side 
she's emperor. I mean, empress or the Suiko Tenno. Uh, maybe I'll, can I just say Suiko Tenno? Suiko Tenno is the one that, uh, the, and then the, uh, the other side is a Prince Shotoku. Shotoku is a regent, but also he teaches a lot of Buddhism. And then both, uh, actually, the when, uh, first of all, the, uh, this uh, Empress Suiko, Suiko Tenno was born uh, actually 554 and then passed away uh, uh, 628 and um, so she took, took the uh, uh, Empress, Empress ship or Tenno uh, 593 so it's actually right 35 years so during that time she did a lot of things actually you know first uh, the the history of Japan Suiko was the uh, first eight woman oh sorry eight moment female uh, take on a role of uh, empress seat and then uh, also uh, during the, his time I mean her time uh, the Suiko region did is the kind of starting a, a, what do you call it uh, um, trade or you know encouraging trade open relationship with the Sui at that time like a China in present but Sui <coughs> both, uh, and then so they have that's in 600 and then he started adopted the uh, ranking system and uh, all of those parts and then also 17 constitution that we said and uh, Prince Shotoku was the also supported this a lot of way and so um in a way you can't do by uh prince shotoku himself to do all those things but then empress uh empress suiko tenno can't do without support of the um prince shotoku actually and uh, so it was a very important uh part of japan and then the uh, so at least you, i hope you can have uh oh maybe i should type in the uh, name but then the, maybe you can look up by the, you know, Wikipedia, whatever. But then that's very important person to think on a history of Japan. And uh, so social uh, basic and also the first constitution is a piece is the most important one. So start from there and then nonviolence is already included at that point. And then differences, of course, it's a Buddhist countries, uh, you know, the bring the Buddhism as the way of going to the countries. So. Uh, in addition to Shintoism, which was uh, not even like a, uh, dogmatic things, but rather to respect all the natures and so forth. So, so but then the, that time, so she's actually old, sort of like ordained as a nun, then do the, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, yeah, govern Japan too. So it's a uh, uh, you know it's amazing uh trade you know the things that we try to do now they already did it seems to me <laughs> you know you go peace is the most important and also trading that you did and then they did also not the uh, birth system but also you know ability and so forth so included as the way to uh run their government and so uh or the country more like so uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons that uh, my foundation, Hewa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York, is based upon the, their teaching, you know, ancient teaching of Japan, and then uh, bringing the, uh, those uh, central uh, elements of what Suiko Tenno did and the, the Prince Shotoku did together. And so I hope uh, female uh, month is also, you know, how to we can work together is also very important. In my opinion, the head should be really like a woman, woman's leadership. And then the, the supporting by the men is probably ideal for, I mean, in my opinions, but uh, I mean, that's the way that I see <laughs> Japanese family <laughs> also. In, in my state, we, we have a community, women will run the show. Right, right. So, and then and the, after the, the marriage, master. male will go and stay with the woman's family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's but, probably the, one of the best way. But anyway, sorry about uh, going to the other places. But yet, um, so these are basically the things that I wanted to share, and I just wanted to write it in to the uh, Suiko is S U I K O, 
and uh, if you like to look up somehow then please do and uh, but i i'm sure that so that's the uh, most oops, sorry sorry the one thing maybe i'll, I'll, I'll add it to later uh, yeah. i couldn't find the <laughs> yeah, have three more speakers to finish yeah okay i'll finish now and so the lastly i saw i thought also i wanted to just emphasize you know in a Bud when the buddhism came to the to japan uh, first thing that but uh that prince shotoka actually gave a talk and then the three buddhist text was mainly used and then one is uh shurimara sutra and then the Vimarakirti Sutra, and then the Rota Sutra, uh, Pundarika Sutra. But then the first one, actually, officially, first one is the uh, Srimara Sutra. Srimara is a female person, is a the the major figure, and then she took, uh, she gave a talk. I'm sorry, she gave teachings on behalf of the Buddha. And so, so that's the one of the Mahayana Sutra, but then also that's the first Sutra, which was female as a the main figure uh, introduced to Japan. And uh, Suiko, of course, Tenno is one of the person who is the audience, but also how much uh, woman has a power to bring, uh, you know, the uh, teachings and um, uh, create such a uh, community and then the leadership so so i hope uh, the woman leadership and then also the me male leadership uh working together so that's the ideal for me and then again uh, it is important to uh, celebrate the female contribution so thank you Lauren. take care for your prayer and bring the story of your culture it's the first time I'm hearing this one. Oh, is that? Oh, if that's the case, then I'm very glad. <laughs> to, no, we'll to have a lecture on that part another day. <laughs> so I have another event after this, so I like to invite Sri Gandhi Kotaji Maji uh, for uh, his prayer and remarks. Is uh, one of the senior disciple of uh, Baba and Sati Sai Baba. Floor is for him. Thank you, Guruji. I'm very happy to be here. Namaste, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm uh, salutations to you all. I'm very happy to see some of you again. I'm an advisor for the Sri Satsai Baba Associated Sarvadharma Service Center in Howell, New Jersey, which conducts service activities in the local and international communities, including soup kitchen, food bank activities, yoga classes, spiritual events, disaster relief, and other uh, service activities. I'll begin with a universal prayer from the Rig Veda, the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tatsavitar Varinyam Bhargo Devatsya Dhimahi Dhyo Yonah Prachodayat the meaning is, we meditate on the effulgence of our Supreme Lord, who is our creator, inspirer, and source of eternal joy. May this light inspire and illumine our intellect and dispel the darkness. So Devi Gayatri in the theme is an aspect of the Divine Mother. It is shown as a female form. And um, it's an honor to be here with you today. Thanks to Guruji for organizing many successful interfaith meetings uh, for years. Uh, and I'm happy to be associated with it. So happy Women's History Month. Uh, we have various dates that we celebrate, uh, Women's Day, et cetera. And uh, this is a one month celebration of, uh, of uh, women's history. There is only one fundamental God or power in the universe, which is the embodiment of uh, what we say, Shiva and Shakti, male and female father and mother. This principle of Shiva Shakti is all pervasive. It means that the world is based on the twin principles of earnestness and faith. So the whole world is in the form of Ardhanarishwara. Ardhanarishwara meaning male, female, equally split. Male on the right side and female on the left side, which is the heart side. And they are in each one of us. So we are constantly accompanied by the divine with us. 
each of them have their responsibility to follow the male aspects and the female aspects, divided equally for the good of the family and society. The future of nations rests in the hands of mothers. That's why one calls one's own country motherland. India is the birthplace of many noble mothers. Our ancient culture has accorded first place to the mother. Father comes second. Since ancient times, women are treated with great reverence and respect in India. They have equal rights and divided, equally divided responsibilities. Unfortunately, centuries of invasion and strife have changed that, but it must be restored. Women are the repositories of a country's truth and culture. Though a mother may have no formal education, she conducts herself in an exemplary manner. She's one of profound wisdom. All this comes from love. There's nothing greater than a mother's love. Mother's words are always sweet. At times she may use harsh words, but they're only meant to correct, not to hurt. Women give up, uh, live up to the duties and glory of womanhood. The title given to a woman in India is Grihalakshmi, the goddess of the home. A woman is expected to confer all prosperity, honor, and good name on the home and the family. Women always strive for the welfare of their family and society. They always aspire for equality, integrity, unity, and fraternity. They always speak the truth. Their hearts are filled with peace and their actions are righteous. This is what women are an ideal. Women confer prosperity and auspiciousness on the family, society, and the world at large. From time immemorial, women of India, by their adherence to high ideals, have bestowed joy on the country, and so they occupy an exalted position which is higher than that of men. Women embody the aspect of mother nature and the ancient sages found solution to problems in life by recognizing this truth. Mother is the very foundation of the woman. Ma is the first word for child. The four important sayings in the culture of India are Matru Devo Bhava, where the mother is God. Pitru Devo Bhava, where the father is God. Acharya Devo Bhava, revere the Guru as God, and Atidhi Devo Bhava, revere the uninvited guest as God. The mother gives birth to the children, she shows the father. Nobody else has the authority to show the father, only the mother has that authority. The father shows the Guru. The Guru leads the child to God. This is the ancient tradition and, uh, and culture that India is based on. Only if the women come up in society, the whole world will turn sacred. But some men don't recognize their good work. Women are capable of ruling nations and even the whole world if they make up their minds. There are so many women leaders in India, famous in history. Men should not uh, consider women as mere workers. Today, our world is on the downside because we take our women very lightly. Women have the strength of mind and the courage to fight for the country and bring about harmony and peace. There's nothing in this world that women cannot achieve. Recognizing the nature of such women, we must encourage them and give them equal, equal opportunities in societies. Such encouragement is not being given today across the world. Some, some men do not tolerate women joining together for a good cause. This must stop. Wherever women are honored, there's prosperity and happiness. Women should never be slighted or treated with disrespect. A home in which the woman sheds tears will be bereft of all prosperity. This is the ancient conception of the role of women in society in India. Mothers play a very important role in shaping the character of children. Contemporary education is largely responsible for the gradual deterioration of children's behavior. In olden days, mothers initiated their children into studies by chanting sacred words and inculcating sacred values. This 
it was done at a very early age. These sacred words get imprinted in the hearts of children. So children should be fostered on the principles of piety and virtue. My mother and I came to the United States in 1952. My father came in 1949 for PhD studies at Columbia University and joined the UN in 1951. So our mother raised five boys in New York City, maintaining the best of the Hindu traditions along with American values. And she worked with women's organizations in the UN and with various Indian cultural organizations. So they lead. She believed in love and service to all. So I'll just conclude with a prayer. Samastha loka sukhino bhavantu. Samastha loka sukhino bhavantu. Samastha loka sukhino bhavantu. May all beings in all worlds be happy. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste and thank you all. May God bless you. Shivoham. Shivoham. Thank you, Sri Arimaji. You brought the real core teaching of Hinduism is more with human dignity. And somehow, some places in India, they mistreat women too. Now, that is a sad news. People won't practice, you know. But in the future, it will change. And India is the only one country had a president and prime minister as a female before America. We are proud of it. So many governors. I, I saw so many. You know. But still, I am not happy that UN don't have a history of a female secretary general. You know, I hope next one or after let's yes. work on that too. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you appreciate now we have two more speakers i'll invite our Ma massimo perino my long time friend massimo flores for you thank you very much and uh, i couldn't agree more on uh, everything that the other uh speaker said before and uh, as i said you know thank you very much for your help to put together people and share knowledge you know which is a, a, i like a, and like me a lot and reach me a lot and uh, i i like uh, something that said uh, iman draman about no women no world which is so true obviously and also what he said just a, a few minutes ago ariyama i really agree a lot on what he said the role about women and uh, I would like to bring my, my remarks today related to the condition of the world today and the degradation of the new generation and the role, the important role of women. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I, in the 1951, uh, the founder of Scientology did a very thoroughly research about the role of the women and the importance they have in our society for the, you know, the well-being of our society. And I would like to write to read a few words about uh, this uh, discovery, this uh, research. And uh, he said in 1951, the historian can peg the point where a society begins its sharpest decline at the east. Is instant when women begin to take part on an equal footing with, with men in political and business affairs, since this means that the men are the decadent and the women are no longer women. This is not a sermon on the role or position of women. It is a statement uh, of a bold and basic fact. When children become unimportant to a society, that society has forfeit its, its future. So the relationship between men and women uh, is very important because it's the vessel wherein uh, is nurtured the life force of both individuals, whereby they create the future of the race in body and thought. So 
but, you know, he said also, men are difficult and troublesome creature, but valuable. The creative care and handling of men is an artful and a beautiful task. Those who would cheat women, woman, women of the rightful place by making them into men should at least realize that by this action, they are destroying not only the women, but the men and the children as well. This is a too great a price to, to pay for being quote unquote modern. You know, if man is to rise to greater heights, then woman must rise with him or even before him. But she must rise as a woman and not as today she is being misled into rising as a man. It is the idiot's joke of frustrated, unvivial men to make women over into the travesty of men, which men themselves have become. And he finished with these um, words. The hearts and skills of woman, the creation and inspiration of which she is capable, and which here and there in isolated places in our culture, she still managed to affect in spite of the ruin and decay of man's world, which spread around her. And this must be brought newly and fully into life. These arts and skills and creation and inspiration are her beauty, just as she is the beauty of mankind. So my remark uh, and follow what uh, Ariana said, what uh, Iman Drame said also, is the importance of the woman, you know, in the creation of our civilization, because the children will be the future politician, they will be the future leaders, they will be the future artists, the future religious leader. And today in our society, if you ask to any elder, you know, and ask uh, what they think about the new generation, uh, they see just uh, uh, not respectful, you know, uh, intolerance, and uh, they think that children can think that they can achieve everything with a shortcut, you know, and uh, that is not good. And the reason why Elon Abbott discovered 70 years ago is the fact that the role of the women has changed. And, uh, and uh, that is the result of what we are seeing in our society today. So I think that it's important that the man's history of women to the point that we have to reevaluate and renew the real role of the women you know, as the uh, creation, the creator of the future generation. And thank you very much for everybody to be here with us and share this knowledge. And for me, it's always a pleasure to listen from you, what you are saying, your thought, and I, I listen all the time. So thank you very much. So one, one word you had to mention in Italian, Obviously, from Italy, you know, family is very strong. But unfortunately, you know, if you see the degradation also of the Italy culture, is basically follow the uh, the fact that women now work much more and are not at home to care the children that will be the future generation. So, and <laughs> you know, that's the point. Thank you, Reverend Massimo Perinai. Uh you are here from the beginning of the meeting. I call you in the last part of the meeting. Uh, so um, thank you for having your patience to wait. <laughs> so uh, now I like to invite uh, our last speaker, that is our angel of voice, Michelle Delafeve, and she's going to speak today and a song also. Well, she is currently she is the NGO representative for Value Community to the United Nations.
uh, Michelle Flores for it. Ah, uh, thank you. Namaste. Namaste. I usually sing words that I feel are important and also true to my soul. But I think through my experience, which we all come from our own experience since ch childhood, my mother and my grandmother were the first true women that uh, came into my life uh, that were responsible for me seeing what an example of true woman means. And I think that emphasizing to all women that as a mother and as a grandmother, the importance of the words that you speak to the children, as was also brought out here, are so important because the words that children hear are what they will know and follow for the rest of their lives until they have the um, strength and wisdom to find out what their truth is. So as children, I think that is the most important time of our existence to uh, express to them that what is truth for being a good human being and the values of what the Creator has to make each human being perfection. And those qualities should be taught to children at a very young age and continue. It's important that that is as important as teaching arithmetic or, or uh, history. There must be that also, as uh, someone had expressed, that, um, that part, the guru part of life is so very, very important. And um, the fact also, I think we need an extreme change, and hopefully women are beginning to realize that um, advertisement, uh, the entertainment industry, which I have seen, has can also manipulate uh, uh, what possibly can be the perfection of human beings. Cosmetic industry, all the music industry has the power to uh, alter and have uh, people realize and see what can be done. So that shift will definitely help uh, what expresses true, uh, beautiful women. And that would need to be uh, through the advertising and the, the communication. And uh, every time you see another woman in power or has uh, lots of um, media uh, exposure, that that person has such power to alter or make things um, uh, holy. <laughs> and that means uh, for women to understand what is a holy woman. So that, hopefully, uh, in my walk of life, and I've been here quite a while, and I feel like as a spiritual being having a human experience, uh, that uh, those uh, elements of and the quality of, of, of the human woman must be um, uh, emphasized. And uh, that will also teach 
the young ones as they continue on their journey, how to, to bring about more love and nurturing and compassion and hopefully peace within all of us. So um, that, <laughs> thank you, Kuroshi. <laughs> and I hope that I will become and I am the example of what the creator wants the best of me. And that's all we can be is the best that we feel each of us can be. And um, thank you. <laughs> May yeah. I be that? Thank you. Thank like you. Like to sing a song or? Oh, what would you like me to? <laughs> I am woman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's good. That's okay. good. <laughs> ah. Okay, here we go. Let me see. My, I have to get my uh, my instruments here. <laughs> I am woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back to pretending, and I've heard it all before, and I've been down there on the floor, no one's ever gonna keep me down again, oh yes, I am wise, but it's wisdom born of pain, yes I've paid the price. But look how much I've gained If I have to I can do anything I am strong I am invincible I am woman You can bend but never break me Cause it only serves to make me more determined to achieve my final goal but I'll come back even stronger not a novice any longer cause you've deepened the convictions in my soul oh yes I am wise but it's wisdom born of pain yes I paid the price oh but look how much I've gained if I have to I will do anything I am strong I am invincible I am woman I am woman Watch me grow See me standing toe to toe As I spread my loving arms Across the land But I'm still an embryo With a long, long way to go until I make my brothers understand. Oh yes, I am wise, but it's wisdom born of pain. Yes, I paid the price, but look how much I've gained. If I have to, I can do anything. I am strong, I am invincible. I am strong, I am courageous, I am loving, I am woman, I am woman, I am woman. Ah, that is good. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you. I I like that song. It, it speaks a lot as far as, well, the that, journey has, be, has started and it's still going on. So let the journey continue. <laughs> thank that, you. That you. was a wonderful gathering today. A very really, uh, happy style today. Uh, ne next Wednesday is the final day for us and 31st evening as usual every month when we have uh, a gathering either dinner or a lunch uh, most probably again we'll do uh, dinner party masala dosa chai party at the indian restaurant on 26th street I, I, I want to bring another place but 
this month won't be able to do it and next month is the earth day celebration we have the earth festival so i thought the new place will be next month and this month we are celebrating tk nagagaki's birthday right tk yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the yeah ha- happy birthday and his organization fourth annual celebration we had last sunday you're the wonderful group and those who didn't speak within this last few de- events uh, they have a chance for next wednesday and so many events are going on with the un communities because of the uh, csw after this i have another event then i had to go to the church center and i saw savita gear from the brahma kumari this year a uh, queen mother blakely is here so so you guys here gandhi king season my brother is there iep inc who is that one iep inc from india or and i see kriba arok kriba singh is here tara devi is here from argentina and rawren chris is here and yeah so let, let us see and june full month of program as usual 30 days program our program in the morning and we partner with other organizations uh, we are working with the indian uh, government for that event and try to put a resolution in the state for yoga promotion and julie definitely there's a piece in the park i'm looking forward to work with the Sister Sabida, that park is already open now. I was walking through it. I saw band shell. They are repaired beautifully, you know. Very nice. So it seems like New York City is coming back to normal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. All are invited. Yeah. Then uh, Sunday, we, we have a meeting with the Indian Yoga Sports Committee and the uh, Kerala Yoga Sports Committee and to pm in new york time we have satsang with the argentina value well, community group and i had to congratulate mirta bado and tara devi those are both are the direct uh, uh, trustees in that organization they made the national organization very well and majority of the members are females in that group so the credit will go to them So uh thank you everyone see you on next Wednesday our final gala thank you happy mothers and women's month thank blessings you. to all <laughs> to all <laughs> yeah happy it's really nice to hear uh, uh, Michelle's song i am a woman that was so uplifting and <laughs> yeah that was nice you pers- So I think thank that was great. All speakers spoke very well, but this is great. Thank you. I am a woman. Sabhadaji, <laughs> uh, so how is your Wednesday next Wednesday? I have to check on um, yeah, okay. something. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Start. I hope I didn't, didn't talk too long, Guruji. No, 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 it was good. Okay. Oh, no, a lot of time we go a little over. That's fine. We don't have to too tight. Sometimes people have to go to other work programs. So ah, that was Ruth. I said, who is that? Happy Women's History Month, everyone. Happy oh, Women's History Month. The same blessings to you. Blessings, everyone. Just wait there. I want to take a photo. One minute. Mm-hmm. I'll take a photo. Ah, uh, who is from the Gandhi King? wait a minute what the photos taking a shot 1 2 3 i have hard time to smile because i pull 1 2 still still going through it but that helped me other is a problem on ninth we are having the program suddenly one piece of the tooth broke it went inside the tooth and i mm. cannot do anything i am running the program 
<laughs> I tried to get a doctor's appointment. It took, they said, oh, one month to get a doctor. Mm. Then I had to go to the emergency pool. Mm. Of having fun. India, I need only one hour to go to my student. They'll pull everything and finish. <laughs> Technology is great. Okay. See you, everyone. Greetings to everyone. Blessing. That was good performance. Yes. Blessing to all. Thank you very much. God bless everyone. Namaste. 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 Blessings. Blessings. Blessings.